and then they don't understand that they're causing more damage. What you want to do is bring them back to Tawheed, yeah, oneness of God, yeah. Do you believe in one God? Let's discuss that first, yeah. Then do you believe in revelation, the Quran? Because if they accept that there's one God, that the Quran is the final revelation, that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him came as the final Prophet, then logically, using deductive reasoning, it follows whatever's in there is from God. Then we now use our understanding of society to supplement that understanding because we know whatever comes from God, God has the picture, we have the pixel. Yeah, because even scientifically, we rely on something called induction. Induction is based upon your observable evidence, you, you theorize and you come up with a theory. So this is what they're doing. They're maybe they're born in this country, they're seeing that people are very monogamous, they, well, supposedly monogamous, and uh, they marry only one, and it's illegal to marry more than one, therefore they have this baggage in their head. If they study more and more countries, if they study more and more civilizations, then a person will come to the realization that, you know what, four makes absolute sense. And that's why I'm saying there's a, there's a kind of distinction to be made here first. Knowing that the book comes from God, the Prophet, it's all from God, then it follows that what's from there is the truth and haq, and then we look at what society tells us. I didn't want to start with what society says, because to us it doesn't supersede the Qur'an. We don't follow the Qur'an because of what society says, what statistics come or what science says. That distinction, yes. So now when it comes to society and the likes, taking for example the, uh, the United Kingdom, in the United Kingdom, the average, sorry to put it crudely, the average sexual partners a person has, on average, is at least seven. It actually goes up. Uh, it's actually went up a few years ago to 11. Women were having 11 sexual partners. Yeah, and men, it changes based upon the time that we're living in, but the average is around six, seven. Now let's look at the six, seven that they, that they are with. If in a society you're constantly interacting with people, then you're seeing their facial features, you're seeing them interact and of course, you know, there are certain feelings involved. And men are very testosterone dr uh, driven. There's books that are written entirely on testosterone, not only on just men, on chimpanzees. And how that testosterone has to leave the body and how that impacts their behavior and society. And today there is a label that's been put against that called toxic masculinity, which doesn't really deal with the cause, which is just bastardizing what testosterone is, which is a natural part and parcel of our existence. Because as we know in civilization, the, the further, furthest back you go, men are polygamous, um, polygynous, that's the accurate term. We're polygynous by nature, yeah? And women are not polygamous, yeah? And this is proven by statistics and research, but just taking the UK as an example, those six, seven sexual partners that a man will have, how does it normally happen? They school in the UK is called Riz. You go to a woman, you literally feed her lies. Yeah, and that's why there's a saying that women fall in love with what they hear and men fall in love with what they see. That's why women wear makeup and men lie. <laughs> yeah? And that's what rizzing is, dating 101 and all of these things. You see a woman, okay, this is the first thing that you say to her and this is what happens and this and that. In other words, it's a lie. It's a facade. You're lying and pretending to be someone that you're not. And a woman is lying. The example, this has happened in real life. A man has got married to a woman. He sees her to look a certain way. He's attracted. They wake up the next day and she's obviously washed her face and taken the makeup off. He wakes up the next day, ah, where's my wife? Who are you? Sister, completely different. So in other words, the dating scene is a fraud. Yeah, it's used to exploit people. Why? For intercourse. And when you go to the bar, not only are you lying in terms of what you're saying and what the other person's showing in terms of their makeup, you now have alcohol to add into the mix. Now you are lying and telling the person certain things and intoxicating them that they're not really in their senses, then you take them home. There's no parents involved. Society is not involved. The law is not involved. And that's why now they're trying to bring in the concept of consent. 
how can you bring in consent? Who's consenting to what? And how do you document that? What, you get the person to write a contract before you consummate with them? Like, what does this mean? So in other words, sister, people are being taken for granted. Yeah? Now, in Islam we say, feelings to the opposite gender are normal. It's ingrained within us. And that's why through that communion, which is a blessed communion, life emanates from it. Men naturally have strength and power over that relationship. We know this, even atheists won't deny it. They have power and control. They can dominate that relationship. That's why the woman needs a wali. She needs a representative to protect her. Man, yeah, that understands the other man. Secondly, there needs to be mahar involved. Yeah, there needs to be an exchange of, it's called, um, how do you translate mahar? Like, I yeah, mahar, yeah, yeah. like, uh, it's a prerequisite yeah. for the wedding to take place, for the nikah to take yeah. place. In other words, if there's no money being, it's her safety. Yeah. Let's put it like that, her safety. Right. Yeah, and that it needs to be a decent amount. That if a person just wants to have a one night stand, what is this? Like you just give somebody, you know, a p p pint of lager, maybe a champagne, a bag of nuts, and that's it. You now have so access to her. Protecting the woman. Oh yes, yeah. sister, sister. Yeah. to protect because from that communion comes life. And what are they doing to the life? If you take the statistics in the West, I'm not exaggerating if I say that they are committing mass infanticide, which is killing of babies. Abortion is common here and that's why part of the, uh, the feminist movement was to get rid of criminal, criminalization of abortion and this is something that is killing, <laughs> you're killing children. Why? Because you had a one night stand. Why? Because you don't take adultery seriously. Why? Because you don't have a wali. Why? Because you say, oh no, no, this is what freedom is. Me giving myself to any man that looks good, says good lines to me, buys me something, drives a nice car and boom, that's it. We're saying no, relationships are more sacred. We understand what a, the, the ingrained nature of a man. And if he wants to be with a woman, she needs to be protected in this, 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 this uh, aspect. <clears throat> Even in terms of divorce, if you get married to a Jewish person, <clears throat> you can't get divorced. The only way you can separate from this Jewish man is if he gives you something called the get. And ironically, you don't get that as a woman. Because even the rabbis can get involved. They can just encourage him, socially ostracize him. But you won't get it until he gives it. And uh, I can go into it, like the Manusmriti of the Hindus and this and that. But the point that I'm trying to say is you get hooked into a web. Yeah, and the thing is Islam protects you from that. Islam says that here's what you need to get married. You can have intercourse, no problem. Yeah, and you enjoy yourselves, no problem. But you as a woman need to get married to get rights from him. Otherwise, he's not going to give you rights. And that's why the graping, you know what I mean by when I say grape. Grape is exponential in these countries. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and um, it's, it's becoming very worrying to such a degree they're going to the other extreme by saying on tubes you can't even stare at somebody yeah, and men are sometimes even scared to shake hands as well, yeah. So to save the woman, to protect her in Islam, knowing that this is the man's desires, we don't say a man must marry for. We say the option is there. And ironically, men are very monogamous here in the West. In fact, even in other countries, because there's another condition that we're told as well, marry more than one if you can do justice. If you can't do justice, then don't marry. Yeah, don't marry more than one. Yeah, so some people mistakenly say Islam says marry for. Oh, Islam says you can marry for. The option is there. I'm going to be honest with you. Living in London, property prices here are ridiculous. For me to pay for gas, electric, all of this, if somebody suggests multiple wives, it's very difficult for me to do justice and you know what I mean for some people sister some people they can the way they are they're mashallah businessmen and knowledgeable and they travel and they meet many people 
and because of that, of it's not fair. Jesus because Christ I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you an example. When you're traveling, when you're traveling, you're not, you don't have, you don't always have access to your wife. Yeah, maybe she's on her period, or maybe you know she's just given birth to the child. So because of that now, you don't have access to that woman. Your lawfully wedded wife. Because of that, testosterone is surging through your body. What does society tell us? That man will now go. Don't, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. Brother, don't touch. Stop it, stop it. This is not your bloody mouth. This is not your bloody mouth. Brother, guys, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch her, don't touch her. Jesus Christ is not the prophet of Islam. Muhammad lied about Jesus Christ in the filthy Quran and the filth of okay. Islam. Should we, and Allah should we, is do you want to just devil. stand a bit over here? Who is okay. disguised yeah, yeah, as devil, okay. as God. Can you go worship God? Okay. Jesus Christ is not yeah. the prophet Okay, so Jesus in other words, when she's going through her menstruation, Muhammad when she she's just have a child and she's recovering, for some women it takes a month to recover, some it takes two months to recover. Jesus. There's no Muhammad solution that's Christ. been given by society. There's no society. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Wait, 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 wait. Guys, guys, guys. One second, one second. One second. Muhammad is the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, I will, I will. I will talk slowly. But Muhammad is the Antichrist. Okay. Come over here then. Come over here. Come over here. Let me give you a turn. Come, 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 come. Muhammad is the cult. Come. Yes. Listen, listen. Yes. Say, say, say it now. Muhammad, he is not the prophet of the Bible. Muhammad is the oh, father you're changing of lies. Now. Okay. And Jesus Christ is not the prophet of Islam. Get that clear in your head. Is that it? Jesus Christ is almighty God, everlasting it? father and prince of peace. Muhammad, the donkey of Allah, he lied about Ladies our Jesus Christ, is who is Lord, God, is and Savior of the whole world. Muhammad, Muhammad is the father the of lies. Muhammad is the father of lies. And Muhammad is the Antichrist. Is Muhammad is the Antichrist. Is your he to completely, is your Muhammad, duty. completely denied the crucifixion, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then but Jesus Christ said, I am the life and the if resurrection. You're a Christian, Jesus Christ said, I, feel bad for I am you. the way, the truth, and the life. You have to Jesus deal with this. Christ says, I am the first married? and the last. Are you married? Jesus Christ says, <laughs> I am married? the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus Christ I is you. the Lord, she is not married. God, <laughs> and Savior. Of the whole world. I Muhammad you. is the false prophet and the antichrist in the whole world. Can you have children? God bless you. Can you have children? My job is done. My job is done. Menopause. <laughs> guys, guys. This is, look, we have to understand when people go through menopause, they have certain mood swings. But for the Christians, this is what you have to deal with. I tell you. Wallahi, if that was a Muslim there, I would have intervened. I would have said, don't you, dare, don't you dare swear at the other religion, the prophet of the other religion. In fact, if a Muslim here insults Jesus, I'll be the first to say, how dare you retract as Muslims were not allowed. This is very important, guys. And as Christians, you guys are too quiet. Yeah, this, is what, this is what you'll see at Speaker's Corner. This is what you have to deal with. Where are the other Christians? You know what? She gets paid. This is an Indian woman who comes from a background of colonization. Her people were colonized for 200 years and now she's still coming with a colonized mindset being utilized, no, with all due respect, by the white man. You won't see the white man speaking like this. They've utilized and hijacked the mind of an Indian. Uh, some people call them Jeets. I don't know how accurate that is. And the Arabs never colonized anybody? Well, the Arabs did colonize, but as, an, as somebody that has an affinity with Arabs, I'm telling you that if somebody insulted the person uh, of, of another religion, I would be the first person out calling the Prophet, calling the Prophet a donkey. Are you justifying that, sir? No, I'm not, but I'm saying would you, would you then tell her not to speak like that because it's not conducive? I didn't have anything to do with that. I'm asking you a question. 
if somebody says that about an adherent of another religion, would you not tell them that's not helpful? It's not my place to say. It's not your place to say. Well, that's the difference between us and you then, because it is my place to say. If somebody calls Jesus an animal, it is my place to say. I will correct them. If somebody, even Charles Darwin, I know, you know, people hold him to the position of divinity. But if somebody insults Charles Darwin, and I know that that person is very close to Charles Darwin or whatnot, I will say, you know what? It's not befitting in this conversation to start with, oh, Charles Darwin is a donkey. No, let's academic points. Let's speak facts. But it's a shame that, you know, you're very quick to heckle out and say, oh, the Arabs and colonization. But when it comes to actually correcting human behavior, that's where you say, oh, it's not really my place to say. <laughs> Somebody wants to call a man a woman, a woman a pogo stick, not your place to say? Obviously not. Yeah, obviously not. Yeah, that's fine. So if your son wants to eat the flesh of another human being, not your place to say if it's legal? We're not talking about, she's not my son. No, I'm saying if your son wants to eat another human being and it's legal, it's not your place to say and he does it? There you go, cannibals as well. Cannibalistic, yeah, a girl can be a man, a man can be a girl, no problem. And I'm sure you're also of the opinion Jews, well, Israel has the right to defend itself against children. 100% Israel has the right to defend itself. There you go. To the script, ladies and gentlemen. They all follow the script. Because when half of the people that have been killed are children, does that not invoke something within you? That's not true. They admit that that's true. That's not. It's been 40,000 Sister, can, sister, right? sister, can you wait a little yeah, bit? No problem. You can come forward, come forward. No, I don't want to come come forward. forward. What, are you not a man? <laughs> you're not a man? <laughs> you're wearing these little tiny little shorts to show me you're a man. Come show me you're a man academically, come. You're defending Israel. Show me if you're a man. Yeah, come. Only 40,000 innocent civilians have been killed, right? Come, come, come. Okay, so tell me, tell me what Israel is actually trying to achieve by killing kids. Let me ask you a question. Why don't we go back to when 2005, when Gaza was given to the Palestinians? Why they didn't do something? Else? If your if your mom, money, one second, one second, one second, one second. Money. If your mom gets raped today, I'm not gonna say let's go back to 100 years ago yeah. when people did this and people. No, 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 no. What do you if mean, your mom, if your ago. mom has been yeah, raped, right. you're not gonna accept what happened 100 years ago. We're talking today when we're seeing scores of babies with limbs missing, and UN, you Amnesty International, Who do you blame and for all the of these. Children dying no, no. In Gaza. Look, we can, we can both have time. Yeah, you can give your point. I'll give my point, and we let the audience decide. My point is simple. If you look at the statistics, if you look at the evidence, Israel hasn't given a single evidence of a beheaded baby, of a baby in an oven, of women with their breasts cut off. These are lies that have constantly been peddled. However, when it comes to statistics that Israel has agreed that Gaza, half of it are infants and it's densely populated and you know what, it's, uh, it's, it's in war, it's what happens, they don't deny it. So I'm curious to know what angle you're bringing. Go ahead. What is your point that uh, there was no proof that you're saying October 7th nothing happened? There was no murders? There I didn't was no even mention October killed, there was, Yeah, you said there was no raping, there was no breasts cut off, there was no children in oven. What was your point in saying that? My point in... Are you saying that nothing, there was no atrocities that happened on October 7th? No, what I'm saying is there's objective organizations that will give evidence that babies are being murdered in what's Gaza. The, Let me difference? finish the point, you know. Let me finish. You asked the question. There was an attack on sir, October sir, 7th. Sir, 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 sir. You've asked the question. You've asked the question. Okay, sure. I don't need to gish gallop and put three things my way. I'm going to answer them one by one. So you said, what did I mean? And it's a very, okay. It's a very media trained thing to say, jumping to October 7th and, oh, is this what you, no, no. I'm saying that when it comes to the infant mortality rate in Gaza, that's something that is statistically verifiable by objective organizations like the UN, the Gaza Health Ministry, Israel itself. Then the three, and if you go on social media, you go on credible uh, journalists. You're, you're, you're just talking, you're slowly Just give me 10 seconds then. Just give me 10 seconds. You're not making a point. No problem. Just give me another 15 seconds and I'll let you do the same thing. When it comes to what I've presented about children and infants being killed, I've given evidence. The three things that, that I mentioned about breasts being cut off, children put in ovens, beheaded babies, there's zero evidence Who of cares? this. Who cares? What difference does that make? I care. Why? What difference does that make? Because if they raped women, they killed innocent people, they uh, took, uh, kidnapped people, innocent hostages, 
that, that's enough. I don't care if there was no rape, uh, uh, breasts were cut off. Who cares? They attacked a sovereign I country. Care. Now they're going to get destroyed. We care. You think it's bad now? It's going to get a hundred times worse. You know why? Because they shouldn't have started that. They could have built a very nice country. Since 2005, they've had sovereignty over that land and they didn't do anything. They get millions and millions of dollars in aid. And what do they do? They build tunnels because they don't want a state. They, they built tunnels. They want the Jews to Did die. Did they build the tunnels? Stop lying to yourself. Did they build the, the tunnels? Made, yes, they built the tunnel. But who, what who about elected on CNN? Hamas? Who elected Hamas? Well, what about when on CNN, CNN one of the one on. of the higher ups came? Have you came, ever been to Palestine? Are you capable of listening to the answer when you ask give a question? Me a, give me a direct answer. Why do I have to give you a direct because answer? Because you just talk rubbish. You didn't give a direct answer. I did. I said, Frankly, that was garbage. To I'm going to be honest. Okay, I've come on. to the park for a year, yeah. and that's the lowest drivel that I've heard in yeah. quite a while. Yeah. But yeah because if, you have no response. No, because. What you said is absolute incoherent. What was incoherent? No, no evidence was provided. Give me one evidence that you provided. About what? The tunnels? About what? There's plenty Ten of tunnels that have been blowing but up. But when you've got Where the Where were the scene? hostages found? There were six when you've got hostages. The they were shot in the sir, back of the head last week. Sir, the tunnels were built by Israel in oh, Gaza. Come on, get the fuck out of here. Israel built the tunnels? I'm talking to a moron. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you just don't worry. Whatever. What's, you're going to see what's going to happen to Palestinians. They fucked with the wrong country. Trust Wh me. Which country? Yeah, exactly. With Israel. Israel. Yes. Israel is not a country. <laughs> yes, it's, it's Palestine. Israel. It is a country. It's Palestine. It's, it's fucking uh, Bangladesh a country. It's Pakistan a country. Yes, their country. country. Where do you come from? Exactly. Iran. I come from Iran. Is it Another Islamic country. And, and what are they going to do to Iran? Come over here. What are they going to do to Iran? So what happened? And just in case you want to know, on CNN, the higher ups came and said, oh, we built the tunnels. And then the anchor said, huh? Well, you built the tunnels. And then he goes, yeah, we built the tunnels. But then they continued afterwards. And then she goes, oh, wait, I, I got taken aback with that one. It's there. You can search this up. CNN, Israel building tunnels. Well, I mean, what else do we take from? What evidence is he really providing us? What Israeli news? Israel.com, Israel.com slash Benjamin Netanyahu. What evidence? I'm speaking evidence and I'm willing to have this conversation if he wants to come back after he's had his hissy fit. No problem. She's still sister? waiting. Oh, okay. Sister, you can. You, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Come on in. Thank you, thank sorry, you, thank sorry. you. We're almost done, but we were in the topic of. Yeah, yeah. I remember where we were. Twice. Don't worry, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, yeah, okay. You got it? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay. I'm ready. I was born ready. I come speaker's corner ready. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. The Palestinians are going through much worse things than this. Me doing this is nothing. If, if this perturbs me, then it means I'm not a man. I'm, I'm ready. They can come, no problem. So sister, I was saying, when women are courted by men, the system currently in place offers them no way to protect them. Yeah, in other words, they can be manipulated, they can be graped, and um, one night stands. This is something which is very common. Yeah, one night stands. So what we say is, when it comes to Islam, Islam understands that a man needs to be with a woman because Allah has created us. He's put testosterone with us, within us. Allah has put certain desires within us. In fact, we're told, we're told that our test is women. But when it comes to women, their test is something different. Yeah, it's preserving their chastity. Yeah, so my question sometimes to these people is, how are you protecting the women? And how are you offering the solutions to these sexually driven men in this age where you have people sleeping around because there is no solution. It's all well and good stating the problem, but let's talk solutions. Yeah, Islam says if you are able to get married to multiple, then you can do so. Yeah, and but you must give them their rights. But what does the other system say? Oh, just ch chirps them, riz them, you know, um, speak to them and then do as you please and then boom. If they become pregnant, then kill the baby and apparently this is the best way to live. So my question to this person would be when they say, oh, I find it very difficult to um, accept polygyny 
my question or my response to them would be that's very surprising because I would say the same when it comes to your worldview at the moment which offers no solutions Islam offers a practical solution to the uh, the physical nature of of man physical nature of a woman and the societal uh, protecting the societal uh, trouble that can come for example just imagine you're just sleeping around you're pregnant you kill the baby no problem and then also when you are in a relationship because I'm studying counseling as well one of the people or one of the big issues that people have when they're coming with trauma is heartbreak yeah heartbreak is not something that you can show it's pain inside and that's something that's very difficult for people to get over and we know we're, we're told in terms of many studies that if the husband and the wife they split up because of ad adultery the man and the woman are more likely to break the law the children are more likely to be obese uh, drug addicts harmful for society and uh, you know ha harbor trauma and all that sort of stuff so in other words breakdown of marriages and sleeping around has consequences for the man for the woman for the children and for society at large because you just can't trust the person yeah so what islam brings in is that's fine you can get married but somebody will have a one night stand they won't tell anyone with marriage you need at least two witnesses bring two witnesses you can't do in secret no 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 people need to know if tomorrow there's question about if your child is illegitimate or legitimate bring the two witnesses bring the imam yeah the one who conducted the ceremony so there are fail safes in place so i would say sister this argument is actually in favor of islam it actually proves the veracity and the practicality of Islam as opposed to the opposing view which offers no solutions. Yeah, I think I understand when you explain it to me but I feel like it just has a bad rep because people who does this normally they're not educated, they are poor and I don't say it in a demeaning way I'm just saying it as in using it as an excuse yes. that they can marry for. Like sometimes uh, in Singapore you don't see this often it's quite a peaceful country, uh, everybody's literate, everybody's educated so they know that to marry two, you got to take care of her financially, physically, everything and as we all know, I'm a wife, you marry one one is quite a headache already yeah. <laughs> so marry two or three is a blessing also but uh, when I, I see this sometimes in deep rural areas, right? where they are always having poor life and thousands of kids and they are not educated and they can't even feed one one but here's the yeah. interesting thing, you know when you're looking at rural areas yeah. then the issue is not to do with the religion yeah. the issue is to do with the socio-economic um, position of those people and of that country I'll give you an example in certain rural areas in certain countries the infant mortality is very high so for them if they have five children or five babies or infants from those five only two will survive so for them, it makes sense to have multiple. And on top of that, because in those cultures and societies, it's not viable for women to work because they're very labor intensive. In certain rural areas, it's, you know, um, farming, it's, you know, mining, it's oil rigs and all that sort of stuff. It's not a befitting place for a woman. Yeah, so men will be working. And even if they bring home a very small wage, many women because even statistically there are more women than men and even as you know the projection of the populations they're showing that women are projected to increase um, as opposed to men um, so this is what i'm saying in order for those women to have a uh, taste of a marriage to be with another man again it's the duty of their family to make sure that that man can take care of them but for some of them it's either she sits at home and rots that's how some people describe it or she marries somebody and just has a degree of life even if the bar is set very low yeah, and, and thank you very much yeah. uh, uh, you explain it well when it comes to like the rural areas and everything because people who are not there we yeah. can't see it right yes, so yes all i can see is like why are you wearing when you can't fit yeah, you know yeah. and it gives us not such a bad 
me. And when someone asks me, I don't know how to explain to them. But now that you explain it so beautifully, at least I, well, of course, my husband is still gonna be, not gonna marry too. Just kidding. <laughs> but but at least I understand where it's coming from, and it's not coming from a place of greed. It's also protecting the woman, like you said. Um, if he wants to have one night stand with another woman, if he wants to marry that woman, at least. Let me give you a statistic. Yeah. Yeah, and this is this again was on CNN. Okay. Even though that guy was very allergic to um, <laughs> uh, CNN. Uh, also, if you allow me to say something, yeah, I'm course. from Saudi Arabia, yeah. and I have ten uncles. No one of them has more than one wife. Yeah. Because it's too difficult, even the Muslims countries, yeah. it's not that something common in Saudi yeah, Arabia. Yeah, yeah. Unless yeah, if you are yeah. able physically, financially, in that yeah. case, if you are able, go ahead for it. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Like, you know, when people debate, right, that's the yeah. easiest thing they can bring it up. Yeah. So, and that's something that I just was curious. Yeah. Here's the other thing as well. By 2024, there was a study done by Morgan Stanley. Yeah, and they said, that by 2030, it's 2024 now, by 2030, in about six years, 45% of the women will be single from the ages of 25 to 44. So that, that gives an example that Islam looks at the picture, we look at the pixel, small thing. And if I was to give you a very simple response to these people, when they say, yeah, I'm finding it difficult to accept Islam because of you know, marrying four wives. You say marrying four wives does not disprove God. Yeah? yeah. So even if marrying four wives is there, does that mean that it, that disproves God? Does that, mean, that, does that mean that the scripture is invalid? Does that mean that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is not the final messenger anymore? So that is a, that works on the presumption that a person is accepting that there is a God, that the Quran is true and that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is also true as well. So what you want to do is you want to bring him to the, the crux of the matter, which is do you believe in God? Yeah. yeah? And yeah. that's where the crux of the issue lies. Because if you believe in God, then you accept that there is revelation and prophethood. Then it follows that what comes from there must be logical. Now we can look into the socio-economic views and statistics and stuff like that. Because this sister, the Morgan Stanley study, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. This is just the beginning. And I, when I think about it, it's so beautiful. Islam is so beautiful because it, it gives timeless solution, right? It's, it's created way long ago, but it's already predicting these sort of future problems. And that itself gives me so much peace knowing that. And here's another thing as well. You know when certain people get married to multiple wives in these rural areas, the problem and issue there is that because people are struggling hand to mouth, Either that woman, she stays at home and if she's not working, she's seen as a, a boj. She's seen as like a burden. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? So this is, a, this is a way of honoring her. And sometimes a man will say, I can't, I don't have this much. I can't earn this much. But if you want to come, these are the conditions. They will accept fewer criteria. They will set the bar very, whole, uh, very low. Why? Because of where they are and in their survival. So that's why it's very important for us to distinguish between what a society does, what a people does, what people do, and what the Islamic teachings are in the primary source. Primary source, Islam caps it off to four. Islam says if you can do justice. However, implementation, you can't now conflate a person that's implementing Islam, that's trying to implement Islam, to what Islam says. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. For example, he's a Christian, yeah. Most of the he's a Christian. One second, he's the friend of that lady. Most of the Muslim ladies, they are given a false. Uh, uh, sister, false, uh, he's uh, uh, the friend of that lady. Understanding, false understanding, and uh, they they were proposed uh, by giving a false understanding and false uh, uh, teaching. So they accepted uh, as a wife. Huh? What, do you mean? what do you mean by false teaching? False teaching means. False, false teaching. Yeah, false, false teaching. Okay. Yeah. Given, given a false teaching like. Uh, we have the knowledge. Muhammad. 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 Mu
Muhammad 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 is according to Quran is a false prophet. Oh, how did you know that? According to Quran, yes. he is a false prophet. How did you know that? Even the Quran says Muhammad is a false prophet. Muhammad. Yeah. Okay. So, Thank you. Thank you so much. Come right. next week. But here's, here's the come next the, week. Sister, sister, what's interesting is we're talking about one second, one second. We're talking about relationships. Come next week. Come next week. And in relationships, for him to contribute, he has to give me a principle from the Bible that competes with a principle from the Quran. And and I will help him. I will help him because if he shows that from the Bible. Women, if they get beaten senseless by their husband, can he prove from the Bible that they can get a divorce? That's all he has to do. Oh. <laughs> can you come next week? I told you come next week. What is this? Yeah. Oh. Okay. You have I to can, repeat. I can prove oh. that oh. Aisha, Aisha, Aisha was hit oh. by Muhammad on her chest. You and know. the case. But you can't answer my question. Case was oh. dismissed. So yes, you, master, so you, you can't answer this. Muhammad was a powerful man. But you can't answer this. Muhammad was a powerful Muhammad man. Muhammad. And uh, Aisha was, uh, was a was what? weak So woman. if your Christian woman gets and, uh, beaten by you, she was not senseless, given, she can was she divorce you? Given, uh, can your uh, Christian wife divorce you if you beat her? Uh, not given. If a, you beat your Christian wife senseless, can she get divorced from you?